Welcome, I am Annette Reeder from TheBiblicalNutritionist.com and today I want to teach you what is the number one thing you need to do to be prepared. This is so important. Just a couple weeks ago, we had a huge snowstorm come through Virginia and Highway 95, which is the main thoroughfare from Maine all the way down to the Keys, was shut down for 19 hours. People were in their cars, backed up for miles because of a tractor trailer accident, and they were stuck for 19 hours. Okay, now that is a scenario I never want to happen to you, but if it does, I was thinking when it happened, I wonder how many, uh, I wonder just how many of those people were, were prepared, were ready for what had happened. And I was just like, I need to go there, I need to help them, but it was too far away and the roads were horrific. So I wanna teach you how to be prepared for these situations. Ready, please hit the like, the subscribe, so we can stay connected and I can get to know you and you can let me know what you'd like me to do a video about. I get to share with you God's recipe for excellent health, which always includes the number one ingredient, God loves you. He loves you with an amazing, everlasting love and he will always love you. All right, so let's get started. So you need a backpack. You need a backpack, does not have to be the expensive kind, just a school backpack. They always go on sale in the fall and you probably already have backpacks in your attic or in your garage, pull them out, you know, just so long as they're sturdy and they have straps that you can carry on your back, that's all you matter. Now, let me just go. I have been in our, these are either called bug out bags, I call them our prepper bag. We have one for each of us in both of the vehicles, so that's a total of four bags that I have put together. Inside our prepper bag, so let's just go through this. I will have clothing. This is just a long sleeve denim shirt. It works really well just for that extra layer of warmth. I will always keep a shirt, usually a three quarter length or a long sleeve shirt. This is my bag, not my husband's. And a hat of some kind so that you never know if you need to have a hat to keep the sun off your eyes or off your face, just to kind of um, hold things down with your hair or whatever's going on. Warm gloves, a must. Now. This is the items that I've taken out the most, which is socks. Yes, I have some short socks and I have some long warm socks. We were just at a Christmas holiday event at one of the parks, you know, one of the theme parks was all lit up for Christmas, so we went. It was colder than I expected, and so I went back out to the car and got my socks. Now, that's one note. Also, if you take something out, be sure to replace it so it's there when you need it next time. So these bags are not just if in a crazy emergency happens. These are bags we pull from quite often. So these are the warm clothes you wanna have, gloves, socks, a hat, and some clothing. You could even put pants in here. Uh, for me, they kinda of take up a lot of space, but it's definitely something you could consider. Okay, so that's what we do as far as clothing. The, the other clothing item is a bandana. Every, you need one for every member in your family, maybe even one for the dog. And so you could use this. It's funny, I was teaching these classes before COVID hit and I was sharing this with people, actually it was just a few months before COVID hit and I was saying you have to have a bandana because you could use it as a mask. Who would have thought we were going to such a mask frenzy when COVID hit? But if you have a bandana, and here's the other thing, sometimes if we're traveling and the store says, oh, you have to have a mask and we don't have any in the car, then we can always pull out our bandana. It's like, okay, we got it. You know, Who would have thought you'd be encouraged to wear a bandana over your nose and then a hat on your head when you go in a store? Now, a bandana has 101 uses, and this is important. You could use it as a tourniquet. You could use it to cover your head if something happened. If, you know, there are a lot of things, reason you can use this. Um, for every member of the family, have a bandana. Sometimes you can even use it as a marker, like, hey, I'm right here. Can you see my bandana? You can use it as a waving flag. It's just 101 reasons you can use a bandana. If you have my Proverbs 31 prepper book, I will be putting in there all of the uses of the bandana because it's more than you can even imagine. I like to tie this on the outside of the bag so I know exactly where it is. All right, so that's another clothing item per se. Now, 
Once we have the clothing figured out, I also have ponchos. So there's a couple different kinds of ponchos. This is a Survivor Ponchos SOL. This is probably the best of all of them that I have. Actually, it's not probably, it is the best. It just does really well at helping you to retain your heat. So if I had been in that situation on Highway 95, I always keep these bags in the car and I'll kind of show you on the video later where I keep these. Um, so we would have been able to retain our heat. We would have been able to keep our heat because your body is a furnace. It's a furnace and it's designed to keep you warm. All we need to do is trap that heat. So these, these ponchos work really well for that. They will keep the rain off. They're repellent on that. So they work really well. But we also have the cheap theme park ponchos and we also have the solar blanket, emergency blanket that we can use as well. So I have a couple different options. So I have the cheap theme park ponchos and we've all been to the theme park when it rains and we're like, oh, where's that poncho? Let's get them out. Of course, once you get them out, then you can't get them put back in as neatly as they were. All right, so staying warm is really important. So between the clothes, between the ponchos, we also wanna be able to light fires. So I keep matches with a Bic lighter in, in a sealed bag so they stay dry. And then I also have utility flames and I have our magnesium stone. So a lot of different ways that I can start fire and that's really important. But if you're going to have the magnesium stone, you're gonna also need a really good knife. So I keep my knife in an outside pocket. Again, I kind of keep it in a little bag. And so this knife is just very strong, uh, very deadly. And I could use it to mark a trail. I could use it to, well, I'll just let your imagination go with everything I can use this knife for. Uh, even for protection if I need to, which that would be scary if I have to do that. Um, so these are important things. So we need to be dry, we need to be warm. We need to have light. So I love this double set of these flashlights. These are actually called lanterns. They, they look kind of trendy, but <laughs> you gotta, they are so cool. So you have the ability to have a flashing red light. You have just the off, but you also have a beam. And when you shine that beam at someone, it's gonna blind them. And sometimes that's a defense. You can use this to protect yourself by shining this in someone's eyes who's coming at you that you don't know or you don't approve of them getting that close to you. So this just has lots of different options as a light. So these are very inexpensive. I'll put a link to them down below. You could use the carry-in handle. You could also use the latch and put it on your back pocket if you're hiking. Um, but that's not even the best part. The best part is it has this opening here and you can recharge any of your phones or your um, USB devices. So that's the reason why I got it. It's like, oh, that is totally something that's worth it. So this is just a really cool flashlight. And they come as a double set and there's also another one that you could buy that's just a single one. So these are just the coolest thing ever. So we have light, we have heat. We want to make sure our family is kept full, kept satisfied. Now imagine if you had been in your car 19 hours. Now that's typically three meals that your family, your kids, your, your spouse would be like, oh, I'm just getting hungry. Funny thing is a lot of stories came out from that episode. People, one lady had oranges in her car. So she went around and started handing out oranges. There was a bread truck that was stranded as well. So everybody in their cars, they started calling the bread company, hey, can we have the bread? And he was able to just open up his truck and give everyone bread. So people are good. People have a good heart because God's put in us a good heart. So people come together and they, they survive together. Uh, the, the number of people that are evil is, is a small percentage. They just seem to get the most attention. But I do need to make sure I have food ready. So we will always have maybe some, some bagel chips because they're hard, they're crunchy, they're satisfying. And yet, I will also have other foods. So that's gonna give us carbs for energy. I keep a bag of almonds in here. And these are kind of my things I pick up at the grocery store. I will buy these individual packets of peanut butter, almond butter. Sometimes you can get them with chocolate in it as well, hazelnut chocolate. Um, so these serve really well. One of these is easily a, a good satisfying you know, staple that could keep you going two to three hours. So you can see I have quite a few in here. I'm looking for good quality protein to keep that satiety, to keep my mind functioning. I also put in the foil tuna packets. I put several of these. So I typically, in each one of our bags, have enough food. Now it may not be, you know, your Snickers bar or some of that kind of food, because those things don't last in a prepper bag. I've, I've, not that I've tried Snickers, but I've tried other things that more healthful variety 
And these are the foods that we have found that last the best. So I don't want to waste money. So we could actually go almost five days on what I have stored in this, just in this one bag. And so I have a bag of food and I do keep it in a bag because I used to just kind of have it loose in the bag and then you're like trying to fumble and find everything. No, nah, that's not good. So keep it in its own bag and store that in your bug out bag or prepper bag, whatever you want to call it. Now we will also have a toiletries bag. And so I will have deodorant lip balm. This is the most overlooked item is lip balm. You need lip balm. That is so important because if your lips get dry and, and chapped, that's calling you, then you're going to be miserable. Not only that, when you get try, dry and chapped lips or skin, that invites bacteria because you've lost your defense. So we want to keep lip balm in here as well. We always have a toothbrush. We have toothpaste. We will use samples from the, the hotels where they have good shampoo and conditioner samples in here. Dental floss. Dental floss can be used for so many different reasons. And then we will have some Advil. Uh, and so Q-tips as well. So that's our, you know, kind of our, you know, our supply bag, um, toothpaste, all of that. Then you need water. So if I had been on that highway for 19 hours, the snow was available, clean snow <laughs> was available. So we could have filled our bottle with clean snow, brought it inside, brought it inside our solar blanket. It would have warmed up, it would have melted, and it would have been filtered. So two good options is the Life Straw water bottle, and this is the Sport Berkey. So we have one of these bottles in every one of our bags so that we are always ready. But you could use this all of the time. This could be a daily use bottle, and then you always know where it is. Now, glasses. So I have an extra pair of reading glasses in each bag, just the cheap ones from the, the dollar store or whatever. And then I always have sunglasses in every bag as well. Now, besides that, I need to be able to communicate. And we found these walkie-talkies that we're super excited about. So they say it has a 35-mile radius. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, we know it can go up to five miles, which we're happy about that. Uh, recently, I was hiking with two of my granddaughters, and the trails were not marked. They were marked well, but not with the information we needed. We needed the waterfall, and it didn't say which way was the waterfall. So, and I was trying to call my family, and I was trying to look up online on my phone, my cell phone. I had no internet. I had no internet whatsoever. Now, the walkie-talkie would not tell me where the waterfall is, but if I ever had to separate, or if we had two adults and we were missing a child, if we had to separate, we could stay in connection with each other. We can stay in communication. That's vitally important. And so having something outside of your cell phone, which you can lose, you know, your connection, you would be safer to have a set of walkie talkies. Now, the key thing about these is they're great, but do not store them with the batteries inside. Now, they've gotten better about wrapping the batteries so you don't have the corrosion, but still store them without the battery. Have the battery taped around the outside so it's right there for you, and uh, you'll have that. So a set of two in each vehicle is really important. All right, so I've covered almost everything. If you don't know um, everything about being a prepper, I have the book Proverbs 31 Prepper. I highly, highly recommend that. And I uh, think I've covered everything. So if you have questions about being a prepper, I've just always been a prepper. I, my mom was a prepper. We didn't know it was called a prepper. It was just having confidence. And that's what God teaches us is that when we are confident as adults, our children pick up on that and they're not worried. They're not anxious. So if your children have anxiety issues, you need to ask yourself, where are they getting that from? Am I being anxious? Is my spouse being anxious? Where's my kids picking this up from? And if you then recognize, oh, wow, I am anxious about certain things. You need to address that because your kids feed off of your confidence and they also feed off of your anxiety. And so we want to recognize that. I want you to be confident, confident in the kitchen. Yes, confident with your health, but most importantly, confident in understanding how much God loves you. And when you are confident knowing, hey, if anything happens and I'm on 95 and there's a 19 hour shutdown, I'm, I'm okay, I got this. I would also, if I had kids, throw in a couple pieces of hard candy and even a game of some type of small game, maybe some um, Uno or something like that for a time passer. Uh, and that would be really important too. That would be very important. Actually, for us adults, we probably need that too. So thank you for letting me share this with you. It's been on my heart and on my mind to make sure you're prepared. When I heard about that, that accident, I thought, oh, I have got to get this video out because you really matter to me. And this is what I do. So I just wanted you to know as well how you can be prepared. So I store these underneath the seat in, in the car and in the truck we, th we store them in some totes. 
we take our backpack, store it in a tote, and put it in the bed of the truck. That way we always have them with us. So thanks for watching. I look forward to reading your comments. Be sure and hit like, and please, please, if you have friends, share this video and encourage them to join our channel as well. Thanks for watching.